tree I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see From up here The world seems small We can sit together It's so beautiful You and me meant to be in the great outdoors forever free a vineyard then we first uh, lay out where we would like to have it uh, 
we put down the post and uh, the irrigation system is established. Uh, then we plant the plants. Uh, there's a good number of steps along that where you train the plant up along the trellis and making sure that you have the foundation for where you'll ultimately have your vineyard. Uh, we use a, a drip irrigation system and also on some varieties we use a micro spray. Uh, both of those are designed to use very small amounts of water. In fact, in terms of our conservation efforts, uh, we use probably something less than one-tenth the amount that if this land uh, had home sites on it. So we feel that we're being good conservators of the natural resources that we do have here in Florida. Uh, we are fortunate that uh, the types of grapes that we grow, we don't have to use insecticides. Uh, we found that uh, even when you start getting some insects in the, the uh, vineyard, that if you can leave it alone long enough, something else that likes to eat whatever's in there will come along and take care of that problem. The growing season starts in March with bud break. This is a crucial period during which a late spring frost could reduce the vine's yield. Florida's warm spring days and nights, combined with channel lake breezes to moderate daily temperatures, promote drying of the leaf canopy, thus enhancing wine growth and fruit development. By July, the grapes are approaching the harvest window. When we come into the harvest season, uh, our winemaker is analyzing the grapes almost daily and tells us when those grapes are at the ultimate point to be able to uh, pick and process. And uh, we do use a mechanical harvester. It goes over straddling the rows, shakes off the, the uh, grapes, and very quickly we have them back. So we're processing them just as quickly as we can get them out of the field. Uh, they go from that point on that uh, she completely takes over and we all have a uh, sigh of relief that we've gotten everything out of the field and got it where uh, we can take care of it a whole lot better than what we do with uh, having to conform to whatever nature gives us out here. Once the grapes arrive at the winery, they're weighed, inspected, tested, and undergo careful scrutiny by the winemaker. Uh, the winemaking process begins when the grapes arrive from the vineyards, uh, some from our own vineyards and also others from around the state of Florida that we contract with. They are immediately crushed and uh, pressed into juice. The white juice goes immediately in the tanks where we start the fermentation and add sugar in order to uh, create a wine that has about 12% alcohol. The red grapes are crushed and sent directly to a tank. All the skins and seeds combine where they ferment on the skins to extract the red color from the skins for about two days. The fermentation on the reds is already ongoing. Um, Generally speaking, either white or red wines take about four to six weeks to complete the fermentation. And at that point, the wines settle uh, just by gravity so that some of the impurities that, that come in, the, the uh, grape pulp uh, seeds that may get into the juice, settle out to the bottom of the tank where we can then pull the clear liquid off of the sediments. That's a process called racking. Lab testing is conducted through the lifetime of the wine. It starts in the vineyard prior to harvest when we test the grapes for their sugar content, their acid, and uh, a compound known as pH. Um, all of those things are important in the finished wine. So that we test those, we determine a harvest time, and once the grapes are pressed, we continue to um, test the juice through the fermentation, looking for drops in a sugar content and um, clarification of the wine. We also look at aromas during that process. Um, once the wine is in a finished format, um, we're just continuing to test it on a monthly basis to make sure that it's protected while it's in the tanks awaiting uh, bottling. And then just prior to bottling, when we do our finishing ingredients, um, we'll test the wine again to make sure that it meets our, our profile for the particular wine that we're going to be bottling. This painstaking process.
50 pounds max. thousand bottles of wine for you. You can open your list and if you want a pen you can mark your wine. Here you go baby. I got to film his experience. <laughs> now the wine list is dry down to sweet and I'm starting you with the third wine down. There would be the Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh -huh. Our Cabernet. Enjoy. It's our dry red. This is what our neighbors drink, right? Yeah. Now our Cabernet is milder than <laughs> some. It's medium bodied, not real heavy. First time you ever had Cabernet, not, huh? not compared to these two at the top. Those are full bodied, really dry, Most robust. Small, right? Ours is mild and medium bodied. Mm -hmm. The second one I have is Chardonnay, a dry spark wine. I'm a sweet kind of gal, so. Do you want to try the Chardonnay or not? I'll try it. Okay, well, first of all, I gave you yeah. Cabernet. Okay, this, is this bitter? They're both dry. But you can pour it out. That's what this is for, this little container. If you don't drink it, it'll give it to him. Oh, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. It's not bad. <laughs> it's a milder Cabernet than a lot. This okay, is so now it's a Chardonnay. Chardonnay is next. Our dry white wine. And remember, it's also dry. if you don't care for it, you can pour it out. It's without oak. Some people like it because of that. The first wine was not served cold, although you could chill it slightly. This one and most of our wines are served chill, cold. Yeah, I prefer chill. This is more of a, an acquired taste. Here, you can pour that one out no. for me. I said pour it out for me. Very <laughs> dry, but sometimes people like it because there's no oak. Yeah, that's an acquired taste, yeah. What is a sweet one? Okay, they're going to be down at the other stage. Oh, so this is the, the... I have the four driest. Oh, okay. Pinot Grigio's next, and you can pass if you want. It's pretty dry. Is it sweet? 
No, the sweet ones are over there. Okay. I have the four dryers. This is Pinot Grigio. Pinot Grigio. Do you want to I'm going to try that one. It's semi dry. Because I watch the New York Housewives and she's always drinking Pinot Grigio. <laughs> so I got to try the Pinot Grigio from Mrs. Housewife. Keep up with this housewife. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, Not quite as dry as the Chardonnay. No, no more a bearable. Little, a little more flavorful. Mm -hmm. And the list is dry down to sweet, just like your taste. Bad. The next one's going to be totally different. Chablis. Chablis. It doesn't really seem dry because it does taste just like the grape itself. But as I mentioned, the sweetest ones are over there, so you'll probably like those better. Ooh. But this one's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, it's a different taste. Oh, An original like taste. Original, unique, yeah. yeah. It is unique different. to Florida and a few other states in the South Coast. Yeah. Now, are these kinds of grapes edible other than making wine, really? Yeah, you don't see them in stores too much because they, first of all, they have seeds. Most people don't like to have grapes with seeds. Okay. They have tough skins. Okay. But if you ever see grapes grown here in Florida, they're going to be muscadines. Now, we have four more wines, and I mentioned they're going to be sweeter in the free tasting. At the end, and I know you wouldn't like them, and I'm not sure if you would or not. For $5, you can try these two at the top. They're very dry, full bodied red wines. But anyway, you let her know if you want to try them. I know which one she's looking for, Merlot. Do you have any kind of a Merlot? Well, the Cabernet that you tried first would be close to Just the closest one, yeah. These are are heavier uh, than ours. Ours is medium bodied. These are very full bodied, okay. robust bolt. You want to try it? Yes, would, okay, let let Brienne know. But in the meantime, you've got four sweeter ones included in the. Okay. Right. Awesome. So take your cup and your wine list and pen. Awesome. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate you. I was looking down towards. <laughs> you're so cute with that mask. <laughs> I said you're too cute with that mask. Yeah, I am. Hello. I believe my husband wants to do the $5 taster, and I want the sweets. All right, so we'll do the, the sweets for now. Okay. This first, are you trying the sweets as well? You want to try the sweets? Oh, yeah. Which one is that? We're starting out with a sun blush. This is a semi-sweet. Semi -sweet. It is a rosé. You're going to notice it gives off a floral essence. Okay, so many things. I have to put this into my wardrobe and glasses here, mask there. <laughs> okay, what you think? I think you would like this. Hmm. Next we have our Southern White. So this one's a sweet white wine, similar to a Moscato or a Late Harvest Riesling. Okay, Moscato. Mm -hmm. I like Moscato. Very sweet, also has a refreshing side. Mm. Oh my goodness, I like that one. Mm -hmm. Honey, can you mark the Moscato down? Yeah. I like this one. Southern White, is that right? Yes. Mm. Then we have Southern Red, so this one's our number one seller here. So this accounts for over 50% of our wine sales. This one's the most popular. Yes. Makes a really nice sangria. Mm. I like the last two. I had the pleasure of uh, going to, uh, to the sangria factory in Puerto Rico. No? <laughs> just sangria just doesn't... Not for me. But the wine is. It's good. It's good. Then we have proprietor's reserve, made from southern red and cream sherry. So that cream <clears throat> sherry is going to give you that caramel taste that you get. He loves straight cream sherry. You guys do that too? Yes. You downstairs. Do? Okay. On the other hand, my sister Is this case. new? I have never heard of this one. Um, no. 
You've had it for a little while. And this one is Pink Crescendo? No, Proprietor's Reserve. Proprietor's Oh, I like this one. This is full body. How long have you had it? Because I don't remember. The last time I came here was about 15 years ago. Okay. Uh, we probably have had it for, oh, I'd say like 10 years. Now. Yeah, because I, 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 I would remember this one. I like this one. I like this one a lot. Put a big star next to this one. <laughs> and you said that you want to try the dry wines at the top? Yeah. If you want to follow me over here, you can toss those cups out in this trash. I'm supposed to be filming your experience, and I've got my phone on the ground. Definitely an acquired taste. Can you tell me what the name of that is again? The Napa Cat. The Napa Cat. Napa Valley. You're driving off to this, right? <laughs> Yes, I can do that, honey. <laughs> what does it taste like? I mean, give me... It has a it's own unique taste. You're not telling me anything. <laughs> I like the glass. <laughs> it's a nice glass. Yeah. You know. next, yes, next we have the Petite Syrah, very bold, beautiful, beautiful, vibrant color to it. This is also going to be very dry but, and smooth. You're going to notice hints of blackberry, spice, and vanilla. A lot more fruit forward. Ooh. Mmm. Mm. I smell the blackberry, yeah. Mmm. I think I like that one. Between the two with the smells, I like this one better. Oh, yeah. Very dry. It's dry, though? Oh, I like moist. Uh, okay. Very dry. I like the first one better. You like the first one better? I like the smell of this one. No, I like the first one better. All right, guys. That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, we continue on through here, right? Right down here. Oh, okay. Look at all the awards they got. Wow. Look at all those awards, honey. Awesome.